Hello, I'm Jeff Evenson, and I'm excited to speak with you about a topic I'm passionate about. I'm Senior Vice President and Chief Strategy Officer for Corning Incorporated, which is headquartered in Corning, New York. I'm also Chairman of the Corning Museum of Glass. These positions give me a unique perspective on glass from both a technology and an artistic perspective. The Corning Museum of Glass is a world-renowned institution whose mission is to educate and inspire people about the history, art, and science of glass. Corning Incorporated is a world leader in glass science and related capabilities. For more than 165 years, we've applied our expertise in advanced glass, ceramics, and optical physics to solve tough technology challenges and transform industries. Our innovations include the first glass bulbs for Thomas Edison's electric light, the substrates at the heart of catalytic converters, and the first low-loss optical fiber. We have a long track record of developing life-changing technologies. But I'm not here to talk about my company. Today, I'd like to talk about the life-changing material at the center of what we do. Glass is arguably one of the most transformative materials of all time. And today, it's changing the game for a broad range of industries, including consumer electronics, telecommunications, life sciences, architecture, transportation, energy, and more. I'd like to start by describing the properties that make glass such an extraordinary material. Next, I'll review some of the revolutions that glass has spawned and explain why I believe we only recently entered the glass age. I'll end my prepared remarks with some examples of new glass-based technologies that Corning and other innovators are bringing to life. So, what is glass? At its core, glass is quite simple. It consists mainly of silica in the form of sand. But glass is not a single material. It is a diverse family of materials. By adding different elements, you can dramatically change its properties and thereby tune its capabilities for different applications. Let's talk about some of the inherent and achievable properties that make glass so special. I'm sure you already appreciate its aesthetic properties. For more than 3,000 years, artists have used glass because of how it forms, how it feels, how it handles light, and how it takes on color. But glass is also remarkable because of its technical attributes. I want to share some examples of the technical properties of glass that may surprise you. For example, glass is one of the world's most stable and enduring engineering materials. Silica glasses get their stability from a continuous network of silicon oxygen bonds. These bonds remain intact from the time the component sand is mined through the life cycle of the material. That's why glass objects endure for centuries. In contrast, metals corrode and plastic disintegrate and generate toxic chemicals when they burn. Let's consider an example. Have any of you heard people say that glass windows in medieval cathedrals are slightly thicker at the bottom than at the top because of relaxation over the centuries? The reality is, it would take many times the age of the earth for gravity to create a visible change in the thickness of a glass window. Next, glass is virtually impermeable. It's been used for thousands of years as a container because of its effectiveness at protecting contents from contamination by the surrounding environment. A molecule of oxygen takes about two weeks to pass through a piece of high-tech plastic one millimeter thick. That same oxygen molecule would take 10 quintillion years to pass through one millimeter of silica glass. Now, Corning's glass scientists are sticklers for precision, but even our most senior glass fellow was comfortable rounding that number to never. Glass also features unprecedented transparency which makes it uniquely effective for optical and RF transmission. The glass used for optical fiber is more than 30 times as transparent as the purest water and only about 1% less transmissive than air on a clear day. If the ocean were made of the glass used in optical fiber, you would be able to clearly see the bottom from every point on its surface. And despite its reputation for being fragile, glass can be engineered to be incredibly strong and damage resistant. Scientists estimate glass's theoretical strength at more than 15 gigapascals. Now, I realize there may be a few people in the audience who don't measure things in pascals, so I have an analogy that might help. Imagine a scale that measures the pressure under an elephant's foot. To get this scale to read one gigapascal, you would need to stack 10,000 elephants on top of each other. Now, since I'm not there in person, 
I'm unable to stack 10,000 elephants for you, so I won't be demonstrating this point today. But later in my presentation, I will give you a different demonstration of how strong glass can be. Finally, glass is incredibly versatile, which creates tremendous possibilities from both an artistic and an engineering perspective. Artists can mold, cast, blow, or draw glass to create the desired shape because its viscosity decreases in a smooth and continuous manner with increasing temperature, unlike materials that have abrupt transitions from solid to liquid or gas. And, as I noted earlier, scientists and engineers can create a nearly infinite range of new glasses by combining silica with different elements from the periodic table. To date, scientists have added about 50 other elements to silica glass to create unique compositions but we're just getting started. That brings us to the end of the first section. I've described what glass is and illustrated some of the features that make it really cool. And with capabilities like that, it's not surprising that glass has already had a profound impact on the world. The development of spectacles in the 13th century allowed monks to copy and study religious texts and help popularize reading following the invention of the printing press. The development of crown glass in the 14th century allowed people to incorporate windows into their homes to let in light while keeping out cold, wind, and rain. The invention of the telescope in the early 17th century expanded our understanding of the universe in which we live. The development of the microscope enabled the discovery of the cell, bacteria, and viruses, leading to life-saving vaccines and antibiotics. Glass mirrors led to the formal use of linear perspective during the Renaissance and encouraged artists such as Rembrandt to paint self-portraits. The development of tempered glass in the early 1900s led to safer military gear and automotive windshields. Glass lenses and picture tubes created major shifts in popular culture by enabling photography, motion pictures, and television. And the invention of low-loss optical fiber in 1970 created the backbone of the internet, and ushered in a communications revolution. I think you'll agree, that's a pretty impressive list. In light of Glass's long history and profound impact on the world already, why do we believe we are living in the Glass Age today? One reason is the ubiquity of Glass and its central role in our day-to-day -day lives. We interact with Glass screens on our computers and smartphones, take pictures through Glass lenses, transmit and receive information via glass fibers, protect materials and glass covers and containers, and incorporate decorative and functional glass elements into our homes. But the main reason I believe this is the glass age is because of the journey we've made from magic to science and from science back to magic. Let me explain. For centuries, the Lycurgus Cup confounded observers with its mysterious ability to appear jade green when lit from the front and ruby red when lit from the inside. The cup was created in the fourth century, but people didn't understand until relatively recently that the effect was caused by the presence of microscopic silver and gold particles. When monks used early spectacles as reading aids, they didn't understand how the eye refracts light and focuses images. When Murano glassmakers created extraordinarily clear crystal in the 15th century by melting river stones with plant ash, they almost certainly didn't understand how silica interacted with sodium and manganese. People believed that magic was behind all these creations. Today, we've replaced magic with science. We understand how different formulation and fabrication techniques determine the atomic state and structure of a glass. That allows us to precisely control its mechanical, chemical, thermal, and optical properties. Our understanding of glass physics and chemistry also reduces our dependence on serendipity and time-consuming trial and error experimentation. We now use sophisticated modeling techniques to predict how a glass will behave. This knowledge has dramatically accelerated the design and development of new industrial glasses. In the past 10 years alone, glass scientists have unleashed capabilities that we could only dream of a few decades ago. As I noted in the beginning of my remarks, Corning has a 165-year history of glass innovations, yet some of our most recent breakthroughs have happened in relatively quick succession. 
In the past decade, Corning scientists have developed chemically strengthened glass that can withstand the impact of a baseball traveling at more than 56 kilometers per hour. Let's take a look. That's conventional soda lime glass on the left and Corning's chemically strengthened Gorilla Glass on the right. Both are one millimeter thick. Quite a difference, huh? We've also created flexible glass that's slimmer than a dollar bill. Did you ever think you'd see glass that could do this? And we've developed antimicrobial glass that suppresses the growth of mold, mildew, fungi, and bacteria. Of course, we're not the only ones forging new frontiers in glass. For example, the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland has created smart lenses that use optical light guides to display large, high-quality images that augment reality. And scientists at Mosai Corporation in Missouri have developed bioactive glasses that heal flesh wounds by stimulating the body's natural defenses. Pretty cool, huh? The futurist Arthur C. Clarke famously remarked, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think the latest glass innovations are proving his point. So let's talk about some glass innovations that are likely to impact your lives in the near future and what it means to be living in the glass age. Infotainment walls are dissolving the boundaries between the real and the virtual by integrating digital content, social networking, and home and office management capabilities. Interactive retail windows are bridging the gap between online shopping and brick and mortar stores, while digital fitting rooms allow customers to experiment virtually. Smart hubs are becoming a reality in the home, allowing you to control appliances, manage calendars, and display images on customizable interfaces. And cars are becoming cleaner, safer, and more connected, thanks to glass that is lightweight, damage resistant, and optimized for touch technology. Now, those are some of the applications you're likely to see and experience in the very near future. But there are also many exciting glass developments going on behind the scenes to solve some of our world's toughest problems. As we strive to meet the needs of an aging population, glass enables new tools for biomedical discovery and drug delivery. As we try to make our environment greener, glass enables solar technologies to provide cleaner energy. As we continue to improve the way we interact with the world and each other, glass can enable communications with unlimited bandwidth. And as we dissolve the boundaries between the physical and virtual world, glass can enable new display technologies for augmented and virtual reality. Ultimately, glass is enabling a world with cleaner air, more effective medicine, richer entertainment experiences, and more efficient communication. And I think that's a world we all want. Thank you.